Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make chloroform. For this 1.9 liters of 8.7% sodium hypochlorite solution and 53 milliliters of acetone are needed. The beakers were put into an ice bath because this reaction tends to get hot and the hotter it gets the lower our yield will be. We then continued by adding 26.5 milliliters of acetone to each one of the beakers. The reaction that will occur when sodium hypochlorite reacts with acetone is known as the halophone reaction. In case with the acetone, chloroform, sodium hydroxide and sodium acetate will be formed. If the reaction mixture gets too hot, the sodium hypochlorite will break down to form sodium chlorate and sodium chloride and therefore the sodium hypochlorite concentration will decrease overall. The beakers were stirred a few times using a glass rod and afterwards they were allowed to settle. Two hours later we took out one of the beakers and what was nice was that a clear visible layer had settled on the bottom. The top layer was then decanted off into a canister and we actually let it stand in the fridge for another day to get even more chloroform out of solution. What you see on the bottom of the beaker is a nice blob of chloroform. After combining both of the beakers, the blob became even bigger. To get rid of the other top layer of water, everything was put into a separation funnel and the bottom chloroform layer was drained off. The chloroform layer was directly drained into another separation funnel filled with anhydrous calcium chloride to get rid of any remaining water. Furthermore, the calcium chloride will react with any sodium hydroxide that made it over into the acetone to form insoluble calcium hydroxide. The sodium chloride that is also formed is nearly insoluble in chloroform. Therefore, it will also be left behind in the separation funnel. The separation funnel was taken out of the holder, shaken and left to stand for 20 minutes. Afterwards all of the chloroform was transferred to a properly labeled bottle. If absolutely pure chloroform is needed, a distillation must be performed. But because we just plan to make another synthesis in the future involving chloroform, we didn't need highly pure chloroform, but this was really enough. And there you have it, a nice bottle of chloroform. We ended up with 39 milliliters of chloroform and this corresponds to yields of around 66%. To prevent phosphine formation, the chloroform was mixed with 0.5 milliliters of ethanol and the bottle was wrapped in aluminium foil. The chloroform which is still going to settle in the canister wasn't included in the video and we will use it for crew projects. And there you have it, how to make chloroform. If you like this video make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more stuff like this in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time.